Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is our second hypercast, uh, hopefully second of many. Um, we've got so many uh, interesting and amazing, talented uh, people in this industry that we'd like to connect with and uh, talk with on this show. Tonight, we've got Mr. Nico Hurtado. Thanks for joining us, Nico. Uh, uh, he's uh, one of the preeminent realists right now uh, in, in both oil paint and uh, on skin. A lot of you are familiar with his tattoo work. But uh, more recently, he's been really taking his painting seriously. And because this show is, uh, you know, often meant to focus on the idea of fine art in the tattoo world, he's a great guest for us to have because he's somebody who's taking his realism, in, you know, across the, the boundary of mediums. So we've put together a short intro for Nico uh, based on some uh, very kind of fun archival footage. Let's start with that. And then we'd like to welcome our special guest. You know, it's real inspirational, I think, for, for the people up here and the people watching. I mean, I don't do a lot of painting, so like I took this opportunity to really learn and watch everybody and paint at the same time and kind of apply it. My name is Nico Hurtado. Um, I've been tattooing for close to eight years now. Uh, I've been painting probably maybe two years, year and a half tops, I'd say. I went really a, a lot bigger, man, than I ever have. Like, the painting's probably twice as big as anything I've ever done, but I figured, you know, it was a, it was a situation I needed to challenge myself in and see what I could do, you know, and see if I could even produce something that big under pressure. But as the weekend went on, just me personally, I've struggled with my piece a little bit here and there, you know what I mean? Uh, making decisions, not really sure where I wanted to go with it. So that's been the hardest part for me, but that's just on my own thing, and you know, but I've been inspired by everybody else so I keep trying and keep doing it you know when at home I probably would have just walked away okay uh Nico welcome to our show you've been pretty much non-stop I bet you've uh been on the same kind of crazy no sleep schedule as we are yeah uh, I was just wondering if you ever slept Nico <laughs> do you ever sleep yeah I sleep you know uh luckily Joanne she's <laughs> been great. she helps me a lot so uh she lets me sleep <laughs> she helps with the kids more you know that's great so uh, you've really been working on this show pretty much nonstop for what, about three months? Yeah, I took, a, took about three months off. Um, I had a tattoo a few times here and there, but uh, yeah, I took pretty much three months off just to work on this. And uh, the show, it's, it's called Renati. Um, uh, would you like to tell us about that title, what it means? Yeah, because, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, my dad's from Mexico and my mom's Mexican-American, so... Uh, the word Nirenati is uh, a Latin word, and so I figured, you know, since I speak English, my parents are from, well, my dad's from Mexico, that, you know, everything comes from the Latin language, um, that I would use that word, and it just means reborn. So I figured uh, from going from tattooing into this, uh, you know, fine art or just painting world, um, that I would, you know, use that in order to say, like, a reborn, a rebirth. I really didn't have an idea to, like, put a whole show together. I just like to paint people and figures and I just had fun, you know, so really that's just all it's about. It's just having fun and being reborn. That's beautiful. Do you have a favorite piece that you did from the show, a personal favorite? I mean, uh, yeah, there always are favorites. Us, there was two that went easier than the rest. Uh, there was a tattoo machine one with like the pearls. It's called Guns and Butter. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was probably one of my favorite ones. And then... I did one on a circle, and it was a girl with ram horns, um, and that was that, those two, because they went so easy as far as like from start to end, it was like quick, and I didn't run into a whole lot of problems where I was fighting it. It just felt more organic. Th those are probably my favorite, just because of that. But I love them all, you know. I mean, I put time into them, so I mean they're all kind of like my little babies <laughs> right now. You guys yeah. know how it is. Yes. Your, uh, all your new paintings are beautiful. They're um, amazing. Thank what do you think makes the difference uh, in terms of like the paintings that you struggle with versus the ones that just, just fall out of your hand? What do you think it is that makes the difference? Um, I don't know. I, I, all, the, all the pieces, I pretty much, uh, most of them I cut myself, like the wood and I prep the boards and everything. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's maybe just taking the time with, making my decisions when I paint rather than just like rushing them. Cause some of them, you know, I'm just trying to get them in there so that way I can fix them and, and, and change them the way I want. And then some, I'm 
really taking a lot of time to make each decision with every, you know, paint stroke I put down. So those ones, I took a lot more time to make each decision and just made sure like I gave myself like three days to complete them or four days. And so it was like, okay, this is what I have to do. This is the time frame, And it just felt like it went a lot more smoothly with other ones. I had other things in my head and maybe it was just, it wasn't as like the thought wasn't there as much, you know? I mean, I still love them, but it was a lot different. Would you say that same analogy applies to tattooing and the way that you tattoo? Yeah, you know, uh, the clearer my head is, the better it is. Uh, the more I, I notice, the more I focus before I start, like I guess like a premeditative thing, um, I feel better about it. You know, I just think sometimes if I jump into it and don't have as much of a plan, I kind of, it's kind of, it's easier to fail, you know, so I, I need to be planned out more. Yeah. I, I can completely appreciate that, and I can see that parallel really beautifully between the painting and the tattooing, both of which you do very well. Do you find <laughs> that the, the painting gives you a little bit more room to not plan, or do you find that you really apply the same sort of standards of, of planning everything ahead that you would with a tattoo? Um, I mean, I try to plan ahead as much as I can, but there's, a, there's certain pieces that, you know, uh, they change, you know, like my son's, I was painting a portrait of my son and he had little horns on him and I was just having fun with it. But I just made it make more sense with his personality and just the things he had been talking to me about at the time. So I changed it. You know what I mean? Like I just added things and made it more fun. You know, sometimes it's just like making stuff up and not really being so perfect. The great thing about paint, and this is something from Sean Barber that he told me is, you know, if it's dry, you could just wipe it off. So if you do something that you don't like, then you just take it off and you start over. It's not really as, uh, not like tattoos, man. You make a decision, it's there forever. And that's the one thing I love about tattoos is because they're so honest. And like what you put, it's what you get. And so there's no changing it, faking it or lying. It's just where you're at is where you're at. It's just when you look at it, it's honest, you know, it's everything's there. People know if it's messed up or if you blew a line out or whatever. It's just a super honest thing to look at. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why people are so blown away by a great tattoo, yeah. you know, almost more so than other art forms, is because of that, like, one chance kind of factor there. Yeah, Absolutely. no, they have to be on decisions. <laughs> it's hard. Nico, how do you feel um, painting has influenced your tattooing and has it changed your tattooing at all since you've been taking painting more seriously? Uh, yeah, I mean, painting has completely changed my tattooing. Uh, decisions and colors I've used before. I, I mean, I look at my old work years ago, you know, and it, it, I kind of like, I guess the only way I can say it is you, you fake it to make it, you know what I mean? So I pretty much just try to copy photos and try to do what I was doing, but uh, I didn't really have much of an understanding and I've learned as I've done it and, and really sought out for knowledge. And uh, just painting with people that I've painted with, um, it's like reverse engineered what I was doing, what I was trying to do. And so, uh, yeah, now I have more of an understanding of what I'm trying to do. And my the funny thing is my tattoo palette is a lot similar to my painting palette. And I try to keep those the same so that way when I go back and forth, it's not any different, you know? So that way I know exactly the decisions I'm making and colors I'm making and the theories I'm using, you know, between light and shadow and things like that. So that way I can create a three-dimensional uh, piece. And so, uh, yeah, you know... I, I, I think it's helped a lot. Well, that three-dimensional effect, I mean, that's something that, you know, everyone's blown away by how lifelike you make things. And I think a lot of that is in that sense of dimension. Uh, where does that come from? How do you get that, you know? Uh, to the, the casual listener, you know, tattoo artists who are struggling to get more life and volume and sense of of actually being there in front of you into their work, you know? You, you do this better than anybody. Thanks. Uh, well, I mean, the thing, the thing, the thing uh, I think what I picked up from you uh, a lot, like looking at your work and just loving your work, is the, your sense between, you know, shadow and light and like the contrast between like cool and warms and things like that. Um, and that's where paintings kind of help me. I have like where you like use transparency and opaque. So like use your transparency and your shadows and your opaques and light and the same way you would use, you know, your cools and warms. Um, just using that contrast in tattoos really helps uh, create more of a three-dimensional image and really kind of manipulates the eye, you know? So I try to apply that to the portrait stuff because, you know, everything has light and everything has shadow. 
So really trying to separate those two and, you know, make them work together, but separating them also. So you're actually working the, the trans, translucent versus opaque factor as much as you are the light and dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. With painting, for sure. Um, it, it's a little more difficult with tattooing, but the theory that I'm using is there. And the way my color palette's set up is definitely there, too. So that's, that's kind of that's the route I'm trying to go. Um, I definitely see the purpose and in it. I think uh, it creates more structure a little bit, too, you know, and kind of helps you through things and better decisions. Nico, I'm curious about your uh, background. Did you always draw and paint? Uh, I mean, not paint, but did you always do portraits before you got into tattooing? Because it seems like you're such a natural with uh, interpreting form and shape and representing it realistically. And the human likeness. Yeah, as well. we're just blown away by your skills. I think, um, thank you. I think, uh, no, I mean, I just, when I did draw as a, a kid or just throughout my like teenage years, I always like to draw faces. I just, I mean, I guess the way I see it is most people are connected to that. We see faces all day. We look at each other all day, all the time. And uh, I just think that uh, if you can make someone believe that you're looking at a face or you're looking at somebody, uh, I think it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. You know what I mean? I, I love when I see a painting or a drawing and it's done to a place, even if it's not fully rendered, but you feel like it's a person or there's something there. I, I think that's a... That's pretty, pretty immense, and I'm pretty into that. So I think that's just naturally where I wanted to go. And I think that's yeah. uh, when I go to galleries and stuff, that's naturally what I want to see, too. You know, so uh, I'm just real familiar with that. Like, that's what I like. That's cool. It shows in your work. It really does look like a lot of the portraits you do are looking back at you. Yeah, that's one of the things that I was, uh, I've always been blown away with by, uh, by Sean's work. You know, he's obviously he's got this enormous amount of experience. Um, but, you know, the presence of the person, it's right up there. You know, they, they actually rise up out of the plane of the canvas and they're, they're, they're in the room with you. I would say like you're connecting to their soul. There's an energy in, in the expression that's beyond an interpretation. It's, uh, you know, subtle, but it's really, it's really, it really moves you when, when you capture it. Yeah, I, I, do, I do believe that with Sean's work also. I, I remember he did a, a show here in L.A. with a bunch of L.A. tattooers. And um, I remember when I walked in, just the just the energy and the emotion created from the tattooers that he painted. I remember it struck me so hard. I felt like, I felt emotional. Like I could almost have tears because of how strong the presence of each painting was. And, you know, some of the people I knew, so it felt like them. Like I felt like I was around them. And I think I could feel his energy in the pieces too, that like, that he put so much into them and, and he really cared about it. So he really like, you know, it, it really was, it really was powerful, you know? I was seeing him finishing up a piece, uh, a small portrait of, you know, somebody we know, and, and he very seriously said, yeah, you can really, really see the pain in his eyes. And, and I think I realized at that moment that Sean isn't just painting. He's kind of stepping into the person that he's painting in a way that, uh, you know, I, I think is not something that we can all do, you know? Uh, and so he's not just painting a picture of a person, you know, I think that he's expressing something that, uh, you know, is, is beneath that picture that's a lot bigger than that. It's yeah. sort of like how an actor prepares for a role, yeah. you know, a really good actor prepares for a role by becoming that person. So you're tapping into the essence and pulling it out. And I think you do that with your tattoos and paintings. Yeah, that's and, a great analogy. And Sean clearly does that with his paintings. He's, and he's soulful and I think his heart's in it. And I think that also counts a lot too for your intention. Do yeah, you ever I, find that when you're doing a portrait with a like a strong facial expression on it that you'll find yourself like sometimes with that expression sort of spontaneously forming in your face? That ever happened yeah, to you? That's, that's definitely one of the things I do uh, I do I do I do do or I think about or when I see a, a picture of somebody, even just say like Chet's work, you know, you look at those images and he captures whatever creature he's creating, but you tend to find yourself making that expression or like thinking of what they would sound like, you know, and it's the same thing when you look at a, picture, you know, a photo of a person you never met or, you know, you try to find that essence of like, what are they doing, who are they, why are they doing that or whatever, you know, so uh, definitely you ask questions and try to answer those and that's definitely what I think a great portrait painter or a portrait artist or whoever, um, they're definitely trying to analyze their, their subject more than uh, just looking at technical like perfection you know what I mean like you can have all the values and structures and you know colors right but 
if you don't have that little bit of energy or maybe the, the pain, like you said, in the eyes, uh, it loses itself. It becomes stiff. You know, sometimes it needs just that energy put in that thought, you know, maybe even just the thought of it helps out, you know, but I think those, those people like Sean, definitely, uh, you can see it, you know. That's probably why people collect uh, tattoos of that nature because they want to remember that essence and they go to the people like you that can really capture something beyond just a replication, but, but there's more to it than that. I mean, the way that you tattoo portraits and realism is just like, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, I, could, I could understand why it's in such demand because it's really, really amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. You know how many good portrait tattooers I see right now and how much is out there and uh, it's cool to see people really trying to grab that essence. And there is tattoos that I see once in a while that are like, man, they just hit the nail on the head so perfect. And it's, it's astonishing what's being, what's being done in tattoo today. And, and I'm blown away by it. Yeah, really humbled by it too. Who are some of the, uh, some of the other artists uh, doing uh, realism that have really, you know, in, in any medium, they've really stood out to you I, recently? I mean, it's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, of course, you know, Carlos Rojas that works with me, his tattoos recently have been astonishing. You know, he's been, he's been working really hard and I see him working really hard for what he, you know, just to, to get better at it. And, uh, I really like admire that. And, uh, like Dimitri Samoan, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really great Europeans, but even people down to people that I, I've never even heard their names. Like, uh, there was a guy named, I think like Q tattoo or something like that. He was, he's from Canada and he did this Mike Tyson and, it was, it was incredible, you know what I mean? And, and, but it's crazy because I see these things from people that, it, it's like random. You're just like, whoa, man, where's that right. person come from? You're right. like, it's, it's, it's insane. But it's cool, you know, I'm really excited to see what happens. Yeah, you know, one of the big changes, you know, or part of the big change is, you know, back in the day, I mean, you know, I've been tattooing 25 years, and if you saw a piece that stood out and be like, who is this person? You would get to know who they are. Everybody would get, get to know who they are. There would be a new, like, big thing in the scene. But now it's like all you have to do is flip open a, a magazine. You're going to see 10 names you've never heard of before that are doing work that it just just makes you stop in your tracks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty huge. crazy. It is huge. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But um, It's nice to be part of this revolution. Is there anything else that you, that you wanted to say about you? Let's talk about your show a little bit before we actually take any uh, audience questions. You're, um, you've got this stuff on display right now, and then it's moving to a, a, a museum type space, right? Oh, you wanna yeah. tell us a little oh, bit more about that? Well, uh, the, first, the first part of it was, uh, it was called the Beyond Eden Art Show, and it was at the LA Municipal Art Museum, or Art Gallery or whatever, and it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a funded gallery by the state of California, and these four galleries come together from Southern California and show the, the artwork from people that show in their galleries. So when uh, the guy, Gary from Popro asked me to do the show last year, he asked me if I would like to do the Beyond Eden show. And so that's what just happened. And it was just a two day thing. It was a Saturday and Sunday. And it was pretty much like a preview of what me and Chet did. Um, and then next week, uh, not this weekend, but the 26th of October is the actual like Renati art show and the ego death show for Chet. And, uh, that should be pretty interesting because Chet got this whole like fake funeral thing that he's going to do. And it should be really interesting. So I'm excited to see that. And uh, I'm excited to see my, because I've seen my, my paintings on one wall, but it'll be cool to see my paintings surrounding me on four walls. So I'm, I'm excited about that, you know, because I've been working hard on it, you know. It shows. Have you done, uh, in the course of doing this show, do you think you've done... Uh, I mean, you've been painting since, what, 2008, right? Uh, would yeah. you say you've done as much work now as you have in the previous, you know, couple years combined? Or uh, has your output been pretty, pretty steady? Um, like, what do you mean? Oh, my paints? Um, I yeah. think that, um, I mean, I painted when I could. I would take a week off here and there and maybe try to complete a painting. And, you know, a painting usually takes me anywhere between, like, two to, to five, six days, depending on size. Unless it's really big, then it's a couple of weeks or something. But um, yeah, I mean, most of the painting stuff I did was with Michael Husser, and it was like Ala Prima was from life. So I did a lot of that, you know, and, and that's probably one of my favorite things to do because I'm not good at it, and it's so like mm -hmm. frustrating, and it's so, it's, it's, you know, it teaches you humility. And uh, it's super honest, like tattooing. Like what you, where you're at is 
where you're at. Like, you can't fake that. Like, you're only as good as it shows at the end. And so uh, that's probably what I've done the most of, like, within the last whatever time I've been painting. But this has been a big teaching uh, learning curve because I got to paint every day for, you know, pretty much two months straight, two and a half months. And um, it's been interesting, you know, it's it's been cool. And I'm excited to, to paint more and do larger pieces, but uh, I am also excited to get back to tattooing because that's that's a hard thing because tattooing gives, gives me so much, you know, and uh, I'm really grateful for it. Like, I truly love tattooing. And people ask me, oh, so... Uh, you know, are you going to keep tattooing? And I'm like, yeah, of course, like, I'm, I'm never going to stop. It's part of me, you know, and I, uh, I really, I miss it. You know, I miss what it gives me and I miss doing it. And I want to do both for a long time to come. Yeah. Um, there was a, a question that Michelle and I wanted to ask you, and this is something that doesn't often come up in these kinds of uh, conversations, but the paintings themselves, um, what do they mean? What are you painting about? Um, I mean, do you want to speak about one in particular or, I mean, okay, I'll talk about tattooing. There's a large one I did. Um, it was the largest one I did and it's called Dermographic Illumination. Um, if you were to look at it up close, the, the girl, she's, it's a naked figure and she's standing on a Sailor Jerry traditional flash. And so it's pretty much like standing on traditions of tattooing. Um, I, I really believe in like, where tattooings come from. I, I really respect it. I respect the traditions of tattooing, even though I believe in the future of it too. Um, so yeah, she's standing on traditions and then she has this like filigree-esque, like, you know, it could be any kind of thing looked at like tribal or lettering or whatever. It's like the scrolling that's going through her body. And as it goes up to her top of her arm where she's holding like a Mickey Sharps microdial, it's like illuminating, it's glowing. And uh, as it comes closer to that, the tattoo comes to life and kind of spins off. And uh, it reminds me, like the painting reminds me of a lot of different tattooers. You know, there, there's there's the portrait aspect and the realistic aspect. There's a tribal looking aspect. There's a traditional aspect. There's the Guy Atchison aspect. I sent you a picture and it reminded me of like, if you and Carlos Torres had a baby, it was like uh, this really <laughs> So it was, it was cool. But uh, yeah, so that just has to do with my respect to tattooing. I wanted to do something for that. And like the other one, Guns and Butter, that was from a movie called Baby Boy. It's this movie I, I watched. But he talks about uh, the guns and butter of, like, what, what guns and butter is. And what it is is, uh, like, the guns are things that, that appreciate, like, you know, real estate and what you invest into things and, you know, things that make you money and things that make you worth something later in life or whatever, like tattooing is. And the butter is everything that you get with it, like all the superficial things, all the things that, like, money and just this like glitz and you know this these superficial things that you get so that's why i named it guns and butter he explains it in the movie but it just was it fit perfect because of the cliche saying you know tattoo gun and so i also played off of that too so yeah that piece had a lot to me a lot of meaning for me too so yeah every piece has meaning uh you know they're all different but um definitely i try to try to sometimes i think it through before sometimes i'm doing it and i'm just thinking about it the whole time and it just kind of comes out that way where you change it and stuff. So, yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing your next uh, tattoos based on all this painting activity. I'm curious to see where you go next. <laughs> Me really. too. Well, uh, hey, Gabe, would you like to, uh, or do we have any questions? Hey, how goes it? Yeah, we've got uh, a pretty active chat room here. So people that are catching it live uh, from all over the world. We've got Malaysia, uh, Germany, you know, all over the United States and uh, Puerto Rico. Um, so let me uh, get started here. Uh, Nico, uh, do you have a, a goal or a vision to your work? This is a, a, or do you focus on the client's intentions more? I, I do like both, you know. Um, I, I do like the combination of both. Some days, you know, I like to just make my clients as happy as I can, do what they want. But when, pe when people give me the opportunity to do something creative, I'm more than happy to do that and have fun with it. So uh, it depends. Like with tattooing, uh, I definitely think it's a collaboration between me and my client. And with the painting stuff, it's just all me. So, yeah, I mean, the future for my work, I just want to keep working hard. You know, I think that's, uh, I don't really have a vision. Of course, everybody knows where they want to go, but I just, I'm just trying to do the best I can. Um, you know, a lot of tattooers have this, uh, you know, wish. And of course, it's a, it's a great wish to be able to specialize and have something that people just ask you to do. Once you get into that position, though, 
I find that's that much more valuable when people throw you a challenge every now and mm -hmm. then, and you know, they don't just say, oh, dude, do your thing, but you actually still have to appeal to their needs because that's how we stretch ourselves. You know, it's true because there's sometimes, man, I get so frustrated with my client where it's like they want something different and you're just like, oh, man, I wouldn't do it that way. And then in the end, you're like, man, they were right. You know, they're not always right, but, you know, you got to sit back and be like, dang, I was happier with the way they, they it turned out than with their vision, you know, so it definitely helps out. It really is a collaboration that pushes the pushes us as artists to like go to places we wouldn't normally go with the influence of our clients. I have a question. I know there's more questions to be asked, but I have a question for Nico. What's your fantasy tattoo like right now? If you could just do the ultimate tattoo in your imagination that you haven't done yet, what is it? Like the ultimate tattoo? I mean, I would like to start working bigger. I've, I've started a few pieces recently, and uh, I just have a different vision of what I want to want to how I want to do my work. You know, I, I love Jeff's work, Jeff Gogue and Shige, and you know the large scale stuff they do, and uh, I want to kind of do some stuff that. Um, it's more the way I do my work, but uh, definitely with some influences from uh, other people, you know, as far as like the contrast between foreground and background and, you know, uh, just using more things to change it up. So I know that'll be coming, you know, uh, I think uh, pushing the limits of that stuff is cool. And I just like to do movie portraits. I mean, to me, it's, it's fun, man. I, I'm a movie dork. I love movies and uh, we watch movies here at the shop all day when we tattoo and, uh, you know, I just love to do movie portraits. So anybody that wants one, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You, I'm sure you'll get hit up. <laughs> More questions, Gabe? Yes. Okay. Um, so we have one here. Um, how do uh, how do you do you ever get into artistic funks? And uh, maybe do you have any uh, suggestions on how to curb um, curb getting out or getting out of the funk? Yeah, uh, this has been an interesting road because. You know, I was tattooing so much before I got into this painting thing, and I think I was getting a little bit tired, and I was a little bit, um, how would you say, ungrateful, you know, and I think that doing this kind of taught me a little bit to be grateful for tattooing and, and, and things like that. So uh, changing it up sometimes helps. Uh, with painting right now, uh, you know, it, it is hard to make yourself motivated, but sometimes you just got to sit down and do it and just just do something like, you don't, you know, if you sit around and worry like, man, I'm in a funk or man, you know, I'm not feeling good about this. Sometimes just do something, you know, artistic or, and, and, and push yourself through that. And sometimes you end up doing something that you actually like or are, is interesting and you come out of it, you know? So I always hit funks. I mean, it's been a battle this whole time, you know, but uh, it's a good thing. Have you found that most projects have like sort of a hump somewhere in them that you have to push past? Oh, of course. Yeah, I, definitely. Definitely. This has been, this has been hard. I mean, I have so much more respect. I did this too, because I don't think any time in my life I could have really done this where I could have just done something that makes me no money for three months. You know what I mean? So it was like, <laughs> you're not making any money, you know, and it's kind of crazy and you're watching what you're spending and you know, you're just being careful. And, uh, it was good because it, it, it gave me a little bit of uh, just respect for when I do work in tattooing and also respect for artists that that's all they do is just art, you know, like painting. I mean, that's a hard road, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, oh, yeah. it's a scary road, you know, I have a lot of respect for people like that. Well, that actually leads into yeah, uh, the next exactly. question real quick. Um, sorry to interject. Um, one of the questions mm -hmm. is uh, they hear that uh, running solo shows is extremely expensive and you feel like it's worth it. It depends on what you say what's worth it. If you're talking about compensation and money, no, it's, it's, it's not. I'm going to make more money tattooing. But um, I, never, I, never did, I never even did tattooing because it was m to make money. As far as where tattooing has gone and just the things I've experienced with tattooing, that's all been like kind of mind-blowing because I never knew that what things like this, like even what we're doing right now, was even out there for tattooing. Um, you know, but as far as like the learning and putting, just putting your heart on the line and putting something into something that, like changing the direction just for a little bit, it was definitely worth it. And and even if I were to sell none of the pieces, you know, uh, it, it's a it's a huge experience and nothing good comes out comes without taking a chance, you know. And that's pretty much what I just did and. 
Uh, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely worth it. But for money, um, probably not. I mean, for a businessman, it, it, it probably wouldn't be the smartest decision, but that's what you work hard for and save for and to take chances, you know, and try to create opportunity. You know, of course, if you stretch yourself as an artist, you, you know, continue to increase your value as, yeah. uh, as a tattoo artist. And so, you know, it's got a, got a long-term, you know, benefit there as well that you can't necessarily measure. Yeah, invest, invest it. It's invested. So definitely invest in it. Investing yeah. into the bank of art. And you're building your image as an artist first who happens to tattoo. And when people look at the work you did, they say an artist did this. And I think that gives it even more of a prestigious edge. And the sacrifice that you make that's not monetary, it comes back to you with heart and effort. Yeah, I tried hard. You know, it's 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 a cool experience to do to do this right now. I may not, I don't know. To me, it's a big deal because I feel like uh, it's a hard thing to do is just to give up what you what you love doing and gives you so much every day. You know, like tattooing. You know, and I'm going back to it in two weeks, so I'm excited. But I'm going to go to the New Orleans uh, Voodoo ta Tattoo Convention, oh, yeah. and I have appointments yeah. open. I didn't book anything yet, but I'll be there uh, in the weekend of Halloween. And uh, I'm really excited. So, yeah, New Orleans is fun. Halloween. We've done that show a few times. Really? Is it cool? Yeah, yeah, it's fun, especially being uh, you know out and about. I try to get out of the hotel. Yeah, no, I'm staying on. Not. Yeah, I'll be staying on like the main area, so I'm excited. Me and Joanna are gonna go, and it should be cool. So yeah. All right. Any more questions? Oh yeah, yeah, we've got a ton. So um, well, here the, the, a couple have come in about. Um, well, here's one. Do you uh, do you think that a self-taught artist could be good as one that is not self-taught, uh, which I suppose means, and, some, and somebody else maybe rephrased it, how much of your knowledge is from studying books and learning? Uh, how much has come from trial and error? Okay, so I'm probably going to say some things that probably aren't that good, but uh, especially because my daughter's <laughs> getting older and she uh, she's going to school and asks me how I did in school. But, you know, unfortunately, I never graduated high school. I kind of had a, a rough up, uh, upbringing, you know, and... Um, I never went to college. I took some college classes at Art Center during high school. And, uh, but other than that, that's all I've taken. I've taken classes from, you know, I took Guy Atchison's seminar. I've taken, like, you know, Sean Barber's workshop. I've taken, I've taken a lot of stuff. Recently, I took a Casey Bob painting workshop. It was a week long. Um, you don't necessarily have to go to school. It definitely does help. Helps with opening doors and meeting people and also being around other artists that are driven. But um, if you surround yourself with people that are driven and put yourself in those situations where you're learning, um, you can accomplish anything you want. You know, it's just uh, that's the great thing about art is that uh, if you work hard at it and you try to understand it, it's a visual language and you just got to learn how to how to do that. Yeah, you could look up any tutorial videos on YouTube, you know, and you would probably find you know such a wealth of material there um, that you could learn as much as you could in school. It's just a matter of how much you apply yourself yeah it's the want you know it's the it's wanting to do better and it's wanting to learn and i think that's what uh you'll find a way so yeah all right gabe uh, being a predominant color tattoo artist how has black and gray played a part in your work i think black and gray is a tremendous part of it uh black and gray is like the foundation of of everything i think uh it's based off of value dark to light and I think that um, if you don't have that fundamental of you know black to white uh, you're, it'll show in your color work and you definitely need that in your color work to show like um, you know your depth and you know volume and things like that so uh, I do do a lot of black and gray I actually do more black and gray recently than I do color and it's probably because there's so many good color tattooers but um, yeah it's just uh, it's been fun you know I, I love it I love black and gray and Sometimes it's nice to uh, switch gears. So yeah, I think it's important and I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, I also think that a color tattoo should look good in a black and white photo. Um, that's actually- The Watson of, test. The Watson test, yes. It's a, it's a way of kind of confirming that your, your piece has got enough uh, you know, clear contrast and alternation of dark and light. If you take any tattoo and you put it as a black and white piece, if it, if it doesn't read clearly, it's probably not a successful color tattoo. He told me that a long time ago, but it's it's based off of Watson's observations. So we call it the Watson test. 
<laughs> Actually, it's I argued cool. against Watson about this. I was like, no, put contrasting enough colors, and it's, well, but you know now I, I I totally agree with him that value is first and foremost. Color is kind of like the icing on top of that. Do you do black a black and gray foundation under your tattooing, or do you just kind of go work as you go with values? No, I don't. I don't do a black and gray foundation, but um, I do tend to use a lot more black lately. I think uh, over the years, I just. Uh, tend to go that way. I, I, I actually like to boost the contrast of the tattoo. I think, um, I just like the way it reads better. I think uh, it just reads better to the eye. And when it heals, because, you know, when, when tattoos heal, they always get like, if it's real white and real black, when it heals, it gets a little bit, it meets in the middle, you know? So just because that skin films over it. So I, I really try to boost that contrast. I think any kind of tattoo you do, I think it's worth it just because uh, if you like the contrast, it comes back and it still has a little bit of that, you know, it doesn't lose. If you don't put enough in it, sometimes it comes back and it kind of gets a little flatter and you have to go back into it and make it the way you want it. Let's take one more. That, that would be great to get on with those critiques. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, what we have here then is, um, let's see, well, here, we'll open this can of worms briefly. Um, what do you guys think of all the tattoo shows that they have on now um, where sometimes they're showing unrealistic uh, results in tattooing? As far as the tattoo shows go, I think any type of reality TV is, you know, you just can't read into it too much, you know. I think um, it's drama and it's made for entertainment. And I think that uh, the people on there are doing the best they can. They're just trying to get their foot into somewhere. Um, unfortunately, tattooers don't really have that much say in it. It's more the pr production and whatever the networks want. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't really. I don't really look into it too much. If you're watching it and getting pissed off and overanalyzing it. It's not even meant for it. that. It's just entertainment. You know what I mean? You should just watch it for the drama, yeah. and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, don't. They're here to stay. Obviously, they've been around, and either enjoy it and watch it, or don't watch it and whatever. There's right. nothing. You, you know, I mean, you yeah. can boycott it if it's something that you don't like as an industry. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's crazy to me to see the dynamic of this because I remember when TV shows first started it was looked frowned upon, like the Tattoo Wars time or even that, you know what I mean, guy? Like, it was frowned upon for people to be on TV for tattoos, but now everybody's running up and signing up for these competitions, and it's like, yeah. whoa, like, you know how the dynamic has changed in such a short amount of time, but hey, it is what it is. You gotta roll with the times, roll with the punches. Well, and it's I, well said, roll with the times. Yes. I, I'd like to add one little thing to it, is that to me, from my perspective, it seems like the television exposure for tattoo artists has helped like everyday people be comfortable getting larger scale work. So um, for me, like a lot of my clients are getting large scale work and they're more socially accepted at work. And it's becoming more of a thing where it's not just rock stars and other people that might have been associated with the only people who had tattoos back in the day. Now it's like everyday people getting large scale work. And I feel like ta uh, the television shows have helped uh, bring that into people's lives in a way that they can be more comfortable with the idea of getting tattooed and where the artists are coming from. That's been my experience with it mm -hmm. on a positive note. Yeah, I think people can now envision themselves walking into a shop and getting tattooed. Where That's before it. it was something they couldn't even visualize at all. Feels a little less taboo, you know, and I mean, some people are upset about it losing its mystique, but I like it because my clients are getting larger scale work. I feel like because they're more socially accepted in society, they're more willing to do it and elevates all of us in terms of getting to do larger scale work and more prominent tattoos on people for the better, of course, yeah. whatever that is. <sighs> yeah, people have different ideas of what that might be, but I think that most shop owners would agree that it's been good for business. And I think that the public has a better idea of what a good tattoo is. So how could that possibly be a bad thing? Yeah, for sure. And look at how many, how many good tattooers there is. I'm sure a lot of them have gotten into it within the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, they were probably great artists and see the potential. And now look what they're doing, you know. And I think uh, it's a great thing. So uh, I guess uh, we're ready to start with some uh, critiques. Now, now we're looking at the seal. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's very well done. Nico, I want to hear what you have to say. You're the realist. Yeah, look at those eyes. This is uh, from Matt Driscoll, who did the tattoo. Um, first of all, it's a great tattoo. And with, with I, all these tattoos I look through, I'd like to say something before we even critique them, is uh, it's pretty much splitting hairs. They can always be better. Anything can always be better. But um, they're all pretty great, you know? And, and I was pretty, I'm pretty blown away because it's like, man, how do you even say anything's wrong? Because if I seen that in the street, I'd be like, 
that's a great tattoo, you know? But, um, you know, I think uh, the same thing with this piece. Like I, like I said, I like to see contrast. Even if you don't put a whole lot of black in it, you can add, you know, a, a darker value of it. You know, just say the blue in the back of the head. Maybe, maybe on one side where it's blue on one side. That's the one we're looking at, right? The blue seal. Yep. Um, yeah. yep. Where it's blue on one side, maybe he could have boosted that blue on the outside of it, like the, the actual, like, um, background and made it a lot darker you know and then and then as it slowly comes over to the opposite side get a gradation of lighter value you know it would have created a little bit more depth and a little bit more uh it just would have looked a little bit more interesting you know yeah, but i think uh, it'd be nice to some kind of background uh, you know there's a little bit under that uh clump of whiskers there um and it kind of I think because it's the only place in the tattoo that has that it sort of stands out like when i blur my eyes it just seems like it throws the balance of the whole thing off. Might have been nice to see just a little bit more of that uh, in a couple other places around it. It seems like the background blue and the blue in the face are the same value, so they kind of merge. And if, like Nico was saying, the background was darker, the face would pop forward more from my perspective of it. I wanted to comment on the dimension of this, how it just yeah, broke straight beautiful. forward. You know, the, uh, the way that the, the light values were used so selectively, um, I'm also just really blown away by the gloss effect in those eyes. That's that's somebody who's really looking at their reference and pulling out just the right things. The eyes, the eyes are really cool. Okay. They're great. I think Nico should start every one of these because they're so geared towards what he does in terms of critique. Yeah, this one you need to zoom in a little bit. This is like personal reference because this tattoo is a great tattoo. It's a beautiful tattoo. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's done super well. Uh, for my, for myself, you know, just tattooing, uh, what I was always taught and what I've always learned is, um, just the more pigment and the more saturation of the color, you know, the better, the better it'll last and the better it'll be a little more value. Um, it'd be cool to see a little bit of darker, like how it's dark underneath the eyelids, maybe a little bit darker under the nose. Cause there's so much dark underneath the chin too. Um, and just like a solid, I don't know if this is a solid tattoo, but it doesn't look like it to me. It looks like it's like a. Like how you would work black and gray. It's super right, and wash it. it's a beautiful piece. But uh, personally, uh, this would be like the halfway mark. You know what I mean? Like if you were going to lay out the tattoo and kind of lay the foundation, then you would go back maybe a next sitting and make it full saturated. But it's all preference. I see it as being a little bit sparse. So I would agree on that. My question for you is since you've got so much experience with this, look at the colors in the forehead. Um, now of course, it's, it's all this delicate, beautiful kind of modeling but how do you think that'll hold up i think i think those things will be the first things to go um you know color seems to lighten up a lot over time and uh you know a lot lot different than black and gray and uh i do think if you make decisions like this um you need more structure first of all with some darker contrast if you're just going to leave a lot of the skin open which is which is fine but um you have to know that those real light colors are probably going to get a little a little patchy and a little bit light over time. It's gonna look, it's gonna look completely different. But that's what tattoos do. They age, you know. But um, yep. I think it's an awesome tattoo. You know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I have a question for you because you do so many portraits. Uh, what do you think about white? There's a lot of uh, people who say white is a, is a like a you might as well not use it because it's not going to stay in the skin. But I rely heavily on it, and it seems like that portrait does. A lot of your work does. What are your thoughts on white? I think um, with with, I mean. It's crazy because I've been doing these color portraits with, with coils most of my career, which was a lot more difficult. Like it was the difficult level of that was crazy. And now with rotaries, it's it's way different. Like the the that's why tattoos look so crazy. The playing field is leveled. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what you what you can envision and what you can do is instantly what you can put down. So um, I pretty much think the pigment packing is a lot different. It's a lot more solid. Um, a lot of the new machines like the Injecto or the Hawk, man, those things get those tattoos super solid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no question about the white now with those because it's just, like, in there. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen tattoos look, on, even on dark skin, look crazy, you know? So, I'm, I'm and, and these are huge so ones that I've seen, you know? Are there any uh, drawbacks that you found uh, with, with using machines like that now that you've pretty much made the switch completely? Do they, are they as fast? Would you say that rotaries are as fast as coils? You know, they, with with the way the Injecta and that uh, stuff has been going for my stuff, I've been, I've been really happy with the results. Even because I haven't tattooed in a few months, but uh, 
just with the healing, um, just the needle cartridge, that whole thing, uh, that micro shake that you were talking about, guy, it's just, there's none, you know, it's not even there. And so just the healing's been better. The actual pigment, like saturation in the skin is crazy. And just, you know, what's funny is I haven't done a whole lot of tattoos that I'm like, yeah, really into that. Uh, like I used them for a short time, but the ones that I did, I'm really happy with. And when I look back at the work I was doing, even a year ago, I can see the difference because of the machinery. And it, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy to me, you know? Um, definitely, it's a crazy time in tattooing because these machines are giving people the opportunity to uh, whatever you can draw is exactly what you can put down. It's definitely so, hey, crazy. I'm looking at this piece. Yeah. Uh, it's the gray-haired guy with the machete. There's a lot of really interesting things in this the tattoo. Cheek area. I'll tell you what really stands out, and this is something that you know I try to do in biomech tattoos, is the use of cast shadows in this that, piece. That um, there's not just a strong shadow like off to the left of the nose, but you've got that little bit of shadow like being cast by the cheek, just, you know, into the area above the mustache there, and uh, you've got those angled shadows, you know, streaking across the forehead, uh, you know, diagonally. I just think that brings this thing to life so much. It's uh, um, it's not an effect you see used this effectively very often. Um, at the same time, I think this overall tattoo is a little bit light, mm -hmm. you know, or a little bit too consistent in value from corner to corner. It'd be nice to see uh, a couple parts of it, like, you know, maybe the um, upper area of the forehead actually a little more, um, you know, uh, a little lighter and then a little bit darker, uh, you know, beneath the nose, uh, under the chin, maybe uh, down below the face a little bit. I think that just across, you know, from one corner of the tattoo to the other, it could use a little more contrast. But it, like you're saying, that's splitting here. Yeah, it's a beautiful tattoo. Um, I think I know who this artist is and uh, a, lot, a lot of his work looks similar like this. And this isn't anything like his work is... As far as like the rendering and the tattoos itself, they're immaculate. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. But I, I do see that there definitely is a need for contrast with that, with these, with this one. And I do think that if it had that, it'd be, it, it would take it from being a great, like it's already great to being like, wow, like mind blowing, you know, because of the, if, if it had them darks, you know, and just where the cast shadows lie, even if those were a little darker, just, just that contrast would make it incredible. You know, Nico, I'm just like listening to what you're saying, thinking about your tattoos and looking at this. Uh, I would say that your what makes you excel beyond like just the norm is the fact that your imagination can heighten those things from a reference. And other people might just look at the reference and interpret literally what they see. They don't know how to like enhance those contrast levels. Or they're afraid to make changes. Yeah, without they're afraid being, to change it. Without and losing the life. That's what sets you apart, I think, is that you see that naturally amongst other things, of course. And I think that also comes like, thank you. I mean, I don't I don't. I mean, I just see my work as, you know, how it is. You guys see your work how it is, or, you know, you just yeah. always pick apart. But right. I do think a thing that could help people is uh, practicing. You know, the great thing about portraits and things like this is that you can practice. Like, you can draw it before. Or you can, you know, even the life drawing that I've been do doing, like, it helps you. It helps you with these things because you can pull from outside of tattooing or somewhere else and then bring it back. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with even just, you know, the way guy you do your models and you take reference photos and you know, when you can see things and walk around and understand them more, then you can apply that when you're doing it, you know? So you, you have more thought about it. You know what it looks like in life, in real life and you can apply that to your, to your ability while you're tattooing. So I think that you have a help. memory of repetition. You have a memory of repetition based on experience yeah. and that's how you get better. Uh, Gabe says he's got another eight questions. Um, sure okay, show. let's yeah, go ahead. Go this is overtime. overtime. We'll I'm call fine. it overtime. Who's keeping yeah, track? No, I'm sure people don't care. Phil is waiting to get tattooed. That's yeah. not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a back piece you know waiting. This is a shout out to Phil Robertson. Yes, thank you, Phil, for being so patient. He's, this has been a long day of he's waiting. He's in the studio waiting for his back piece. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. We, we, we've got time for some more questions. We'd love to hear them. When should a tattoo artist feel comfortable enough to reach beyond their comfort zone on a client's skin? And, uh... Question. Mm. It's a good question. Well, you know, the first thing to do is reach beyond your comfort zone on something else, <laughs> you know, uh, and yep. make it comfortable. 
And so then by the time you actually take it to that client skin, it's not quite so far out of your comfort zone. Um, there are things you can do to make your experiments less risky, um, for sure. But you should always be, you know, willing to work at least a little bit, like at, at the outer envelope of your comfort zone. Don't just work smack dab in the middle of it, because you'll just do the same tattoo over and over. The next one is, and this is probably for everybody, um, any more DVDs in the works? And are there any seminars in the Midwest? Yeah, I, I do have another DVD that I've been working on, but uh, it's I haven't had time to complete it or anything, so that should be coming out. Um, it's just a straight up portrait DVD, just normal, just skin tones, not any trippy things or Day of the Dead, or it's just straightforward, uh, you know, things. And so uh, that'll be coming out, and then um, it's pretty much it. Seminars, things like that. I'd actually like I've done the same seminar over and over, but um, I'd like to kind of revamp that and kind of do some new stuff and you know stuff I've learned too since then so hopefully yeah I've got a, a double DVD set in the works um, mere weeks from being ready for release and this is all on uh, you know, basically close-up uh, look at uh, a, you know, application and a, a lot of the focus is on tightening which uh, specifically is about going back into your tattoo with the liner after you've done your work with your magnum or whatever and taking it to the, the, the next level using techniques, kind of like you would with a colored pencil. Um, so this is going to be a two disc set. There's about five hours of material on there. Um, and uh, you can get and find it at tattooeducation.com. Now, one of the things we're going to be doing is uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, have noticed that DVDs are sort of on their way out. And we're going to be offering a lot more classes in a straightforward, streamable format, which is actually more convenient. You could watch it from your phone anytime you wanted. Not have to worry about carrying a disc around and start to skip after a while. So stay tuned. Yes, I do want to mention a seminar. Uh, I'll be having a reinventing the tattoo seminar uh, here at our uh, location in uh, in southern Illinois in April. Uh, this is going to be available uh, via webcast, but uh, we're also going to be uh, we're gonna, we'll have room for uh, I think up to twenty five people here. I'd like to also mention uh, something that I'll be doing with Jeff Gogway in February. Uh, Jeff and I will be doing a collaborative tattoo, webcasting that. Um, I'll be doing a tattoo uh, webinar uh, during that visit, and he'll be doing one as well where he's actually going to be tattooing my hand. And it'll be live so all you guys can watch it. Uh, the next question is from Brazil. Um, Hello, I've been tattooing for some years and want to start traveling around the world tattooing. Uh, do you have any advice? Well, get to know more people in the uh, industry. Uh, go to conventions. That's a great place to do it. Uh, you need to get to know people. Uh, I mean, you can network online. There's a lot you can accomplish that way, but there's nothing that beats the face-to-face -face thing that happens at tattoo events. Um, and the inspiration from other people working that are hungry to push the ink further. Make yourself a really good portfolio before you go. Make it as up-to-date as possible. Make it short, like 12 good photos of your very best work. And introduce yourself. Be, be shameless and, and be bold and Talk to people who you think are doing great work, and before you know it, you'll, you'll have some guest spot offers, and uh, you'll have places that, that you can go and visit. It's a way to get started, but you have to start. You have to take that first step by getting out there. That's true. Nico, how did, how did you do all of your networking? I mean, just, uh, I would say just the same thing you were saying. Just put yourself out there and start talking to people via the internet, and just put your work out there. Make sure you work hard and that you're doing the best you can with your work. And, uh, you know, like-minded people will gravitate, toward, gravitate towards each other. And, you know, you get the opportunity to go to a convention or you want to go to a certain one. I would definitely pick out one where people you, have, you admire or people that you've talked to are at and go meet them. And, yeah, opportunity comes from there, you know, and um, just really putting yourself out there. It's, it's vulnerable, but uh, it's worth it. It's well said. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, this is a, yeah. a, maybe a good one to close with. Uh, do you have any preferences between uh, tattooing or painting? Um, I prefer both. I mean, it, it, they balance each other out. You know, I need both. So they both make me happy, but they both burn me out. So I need to go back and mm -hmm. forth. For sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a relationship between the two. You know, I could, I could never choose one or the other because they're part of each other. That, that's the way I've, I've always looked at it. And the things that I do off skin just make me better at things I do on skin. Working with clients and the challenges that, that you know we take on as, as tattooists, 
uh, just broadens who you are as a, an artist across the board. So uh, I can't imagine not having the, the relationship. It's a creative volley. I agree with Nico, what he said, they're inspire, equally are inspiring and burn you out. So it's nice to go between the two and use them as springboards to breathe energy back into the other medium that's waiting for you. Uh, I found recently I did a painting uh, from my interstate painting. Um, I did it a as tattoo. a tattoo and it was amazing. It was like I flew through the tattoo. I didn't have to think about it and it turned out exactly how I wanted it to because I had done all the thinking as a painter. And I thought to myself, wow, if I had more time, I would love to do more tattoos from paintings because just the synergy between the two are so supportive of each other. So they're, they're equally appreciated and equally frustrating. You know, we've, we've always tried to encourage tattooers who are trying to learn and, and expand what their capabilities are. Pick up another medium. Um, you know, it's not to overcomplicate your life. It's not to become, you know, uh, a famous artist or have a solo show. Although, you know, it's amazing to see, you know, it is possible for tattooists to, to reach that kind of status. But it's to, to grow, it's to make yourself a better artist. And you might produce some nice paintings in the process. You might end up having clients that buy a few of them. But the real reason for picking up another medium is to just be a better artist. And there's no technical trick, no machine. None of those things are going to improve your tattooing as much as just being a better artist. Repetition and observation. Yep. Nico, I want to thank you for showing up for this, this interview. Uh, you're really an amazing artist and, and a very humble guy, and, and we're uh, very honored that you could come join us. And um, amazing work you're doing, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with uh, the, the big opening uh, later this month. How long will your show be up for, Nico? It'll be up for a month, so it'll it'll be cool. Um, yeah, it's for one month, you know. And I'd like to say thank you to you guys, you know, Michelle, Guy, oh. Tattoo Now. Uh, you know, I really appreciate just being able to talk and, you know, uh, I'm super honored, you know, uh, I've just been stuck in my little hole here just doing what I'm doing and I, I'm super appreciative is what I'm trying to say. So thank you. Yeah. Right on, man. We love your work and we can't wait to come visit you and have a barbecue. Yeah. I said that the last show, but we like, all, we like everyone we've talked to so far. <laughs> you know, my place is always open. Thank you. To that, so. The great tattoo barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I'll be looking for your, your new stuff on Instagram as always. Yeah, we can't wait to see your next tattoos and your next paintings and just love what you're doing. You're doing beautiful work. Thank you. And Thank you. Yourself. Have a good night, guys. Thank, Thank you. you for having me again. You have a great night. See you guys around. All right. See Everyone, tune in uh, on the 27th. Sunday the 27th of this month, we'll be interviewing Russ Abbott and we may have some other special guests. Um, and we'll be talking about his new book and his upcoming DVD and fine art in the tattoo world and all those other great things. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.